Hello, this is Pastor Peter with Spring Cypress Church, and thank you so much for joining us again to, with our Bible study series, Living Like Christ. I truly hope that today will have a major impact on your life and help you to live more like Christ and develop that Christian character that is so essential to our lives. Today's subject is humility, and humility is essential for Christian living. In order for us to live like Christ, we must be humble and show the characteristic of humility. So humility is having a modest or a low opinion of yourself. The opposite is arrogance and pride. You see, people that show humility and humble people, they understand that they are imperfect and they think less of themselves because they know who they are in Christ. They admit that God is responsible for their successes and achievements. Humble people are teachable and they have a positive attitude about servanthood. Finally, humble people confess their sins and forgive easily. Hope this makes more sense as we continue. Like always, the things that you will need today are gonna to be your Bible, a notepad and a pen, honesty with yourself and with your group if you're in a work group, and an open mind and an open heart to what God's Word has to share with you today. Let's get started. The greatest example of humility in the Bible is Jesus. And one of the greatest examples he has is when he's washing the feet of his disciples. He even washed the feet of Judas, whom he knew was going to betray him. So listen, we have no excuses to not be humble. We must be humble in order to live like Christ. So again, we go to scripture to see what Jesus did and we start living like him. Let's go to scripture right now in Luke chapter 22, verse 27. It says, who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. This is what Jesus' response was when they were arguing about who would be greater. You see, when they're arguing about who's going to be greater and have a higher position in the kingdom of God once it comes, that's rooted in pride. That's not being humble. There's no humility there. So let me talk to you a little bit about the world and what the world system has to say. The world tells us that the one who is in charge is the best and most important. God says the leader is the one who serves the most and the best. Where are you in serving and in leading? Are you um, any different uh, than those people that think like that. I mean, many people, think about it like this, many people want higher positions and they want more responsibility and more power. But what for? Is it to feed their pride and arrogance or is it to give glory to God? You see, a humble person will give glory and give a testimony, very important, give a testimony to God about their successes and their blessings. A prideful person will just give glory to themselves. They'll leave God out of it. They will say that their success is based off of their hard work. No, see, a humble person knows that everything that they have was given to them by God. Let's go to some scripture here regarding humility and pride. James chapter 4, verse 6, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, say the same thing. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If you're wondering, why should I be humble and not take pride in my own work? Why should I be a, a servant to others instead of, you know, making sure that they understand that I'm the leader? Because of this right here. Listen, I don't mind having people in the world, family or friends oppose me, what I believe, what I think and what I do. But I definitely don't want God opposing me. I mean, why would you want God opposing you? We have enough as believers. We have enough. I'm sure everybody here has an enemy or something where somebody's been against you. But do you really want God opposing you? And when you look at those scriptures in James 4, 6 and 1 Peter 5, 5, it says that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Listen, I want his grace. I want his grace over grace over grace over grace. I want blessings and grace to overflow. And a humble person should want that and also expect that from him. In Luke chapter 14, verse 11, it says, everyone who exalts himself, exalts is one of those church words you don't hear a whole lot. It's meaning lifting yourself up, self-promotion. 
you ever know somebody who always gives you their resume? Hey, I did this, I went there, I know this person, I know that. See, that's somebody that's exalting themselves. It says again, let me start again, verse 11. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Listen, when you exalt yourself, when you lift yourself up, when you promote yourself, you might get a, hey man, good job, pat on the back, maybe it last two seconds, maybe it last two minutes. But after that, people move on. But when God exalts you, it's eternal. So remember, God's exalting you is eternal. Our own is temporary. Exalting yourself really is just saying, look what I did. Humbling yourself says, look what God did. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 5. It says, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Listen. As Christians, we don't need God opposing us. So let's humble ourselves. If God says to humble yourself, if the word of God says it, that means that you can do it. Find ways to humble yourself. If people tell you how good looking you are, then stop believing that. Stop listening to that. If people tell you how smart you are, that's all God. If you can do something better than someone else, you don't have to prove it. See, that's a form of humbling yourself. Sometimes people want to do things Somebody performs well in a sport, they say, hey, well, I can do better. Well, you've never seen this. Well, I know how to do. You see, that's all rooted in pride. That is the opposite of humility, the opposite of being humble. There are four benefits, four, of being humble and showing humility. The first one is that we get uh, God's wisdom when we are humble. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, it tells us this. When pride comes, then comes disgrace but with the humble comes wisdom. Listen, God's wisdom, it comes to people who are teachable, who are correctable. You know who are teachable and correctable? People who are humble, people who show humility. Do you show humility in your life? The second benefit of humility is that God can use you in his kingdom. So many people have told me, man, I want to be used by God. And he just, he doesn't call me. And, and why doesn't he call me now? I know what I'm doing. I'm better than that pastor. I'm better than that leader. I mean, do you hear what's happening? They're just puffing themselves. They're exalting themselves. There's pride there. Why would God use that? We see clearly in scripture, he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So the second one, again, is God can use you in his kingdom when you're humble. Isaiah 66, verse 2, it says, when pride comes, I'm sorry, Isaiah 66, verse 2, it says, all these things my hand has made, and so all these things are mine, says the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look, he that is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. God looks to humble people to do his work. Think about this, characters in the Bible, Moses, Paul, Noah, Jesus, right? David, Daniel, Mary. These were all humble people, servants of God, ready to be used to benefit God and his kingdom. And he used them for mighty great works. God is still using us today, but he is using humble people. Are you showing humility? The third benefit of being uh, humble and showing humility is that you can diffuse arguments because you have no need to fight when you're humble, you see? So it will allow you to acknowledge when someone else is correct if you're humble. If you're prideful, you wanna get the last word in. You don't always need to win an argument, by the way. You don't always have to have the last word. Those things are rooted in pride. You don't always need to get angry to defend yourself. God will defend you when you're humble. Oftentimes, peace and harmony and forgiveness are what humble people strive for. A humble person can easily ask for forgiveness and they easily apologize. Listen to what Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. So be careful when you're uh, tempted to argue. When somebody's trying to draw you into an argument of some sort, you don't always need to argue. You don't always need to win and have the last word. The fourth benefit of humility is this. You can handle unfair treatment and still have peace in your life. Wow. 
If you remember this, living like Christ, you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm going to keep saying it on these Bible studies because that's the fruit that we get when we live like Christ, when we follow him. All right, so listen to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God forgave you. You see, don't feel like you have to take vengeance or get revenge. Remember, God is in control. He will take it. And if the word of God says get rid of, that means that you can do it. Sometimes we ask God, hey, God, get rid of my anger. God, get rid of my swearing. God, get rid of my lustful thoughts. Get rid of my distrust. Get rid of my lying. You know what? There are things that God will do for you, but he won't do everything. If the word of God says for you to humble yourself, that means that you can humble yourself. I'm telling you this, if you would rather God humble you, boy, that's going to be a long lasting um, memory that you're going to have. That's discipline and correction that you should need to get to. See, if you humble yourself, then there's no need for God to humble you. But if you don't, and if you are God's chosen and he has something for you, then he will humble you. Remember, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Ask for God's grace. Let him take care of these things for you. Listen, I know that we all get treated unfairly at times, but man, one of the benefits of humility is that you understand that God is in control. This picture behind me shows a great example of someone who was humble before the Lord. You see, a humble person, they kneel. You can't be on your knees in humility while you're taking a stand in pride. Did you get that one? If you're taking a stand, then you're not in humility. If you're in humility, you're kneeling before God, kneeling before this cross. In humbleness, in humility is God's grace. In pride and arrogance is destruction. It's all the things where God opposes. It's not his blessings. So right now, you know, you know if you live in pride, if you're self-absorbed, if you're more concerned about how you look, how you think, what you say, what you do, do people listen to you? How successful am I? How big is my bank account? How good does my house look? How good does my family act? How good is this? I mean, there's a lot of forms of pride. But if those are the things that I've just mentioned are your concern, then you're not being humble. And you shouldn't expect the grace that God gives us. He gives us grace because we're under the veil of grace right now. So he's going to give it to us. But if you're a humble person, not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think, you take on the role of servant. Really, just follow Jesus. Follow his example. Live like Christ so you can live like Christ. Live like Christ so that you can live with Christ for all eternity. Here's some questions for you all to reflect on in your groups or with yourself. I'd like for you to write down one person that you know that is humble. And then write down, how can you be more like them? Okay. Could be a person in the Bible, could be a person that you know. But write that person down. Write down one thing that's stopping you from humbling yourself before God. If you write those things down and you're in a group, then share those things. And then the third question is, what will your life be like if you were more humble? Brothers and sisters, I truly hope that you take these lessons, these Bible studies to heart. We've shared these scriptures with you. I encourage you to meditate on them, study them, ask God, what are you telling me in this, my God? To live like Christ, you must live like Christ. If you haven't heard this in a while, Jesus loves you and so do we. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day, and we'll see you at the next message. God bless.